Hello again, this is Mr. Pete 222, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is tips number 447 and a half. Now, I also had a tips 447, and I just had to sneak this one in between, thus the half, because there's no room for me to number them any other way than that. But I'm getting back to this, and I, you saw, if you watched the previous video, you saw me make this, and I was both uh, humiliated and... Uh, disappointed in the way this turned out. So I decided to redo it in this video, but with several differences. First of all, recall that this was made with this multi-piece pattern with a parting line. You might remember that from the, from the previous one, with the parting line. Well, that's not really the way I wanted to go originally, and all of my original patterns, as Kevin made them, were this type of pattern one piece tapered in this direction. So I'm going to redo it using one of these, but there's a series of uh, changes that I've made. And let me go through those before we get out to the molding bench. Well, you do recall that I also attempted this off camera in an well, with, without a video, but the sand would stick in here. Why? Because this was supported, and I talked about support. I guess I don't have it here and uh, how rough it is inside of here. Well, I took the time, and this is one of the 90 percenters. So this is smaller than this. I took a lot of time here. I put some leather fillet in there, and I used a lot of this Durham's uh, Rock Hard Water Putty. I used to use this when I was a kid. Note that's only $1.49, so that, that's been on my shelf for probably 30 years and it lasts indefinitely, but I increased the fillets, I, I filled what amounts to a little bit of roughness on the top sides, I put a lot of fillet down in the corner, all with the hopes that it would withdraw, the sand would withdraw, and I've already done one, and yes it does. Now the other reason for reducing this to the 90 percenter, note that it's a little bit smaller, and it will fit in my smaller flask, that is my 10 by 12 flask that has 3 inch copes and 3 inch drags, although I think I'll have to use one of the 4 inchers. So, uh, why all of that? Because in my emaciated and weakened old age state, I can't handle those big flasks. And that was a part of the reason for the failures here. Yes, I'm yapping. I know I am. I drank a Coca-Cola, a Mexican Coke that has real sugar in it. And boy, I love that. Uh, the Americans, all they make is that uh, stuff with that horrible corn sweetener. So, anyway, we'll go out to the bench. I've already made one, uh, one mold, uh, and I might make another one, but I'll show you what I got and how nicely it pulled. Now, a second thing that I did, and you know that I've been getting uh, advice here from Sand Rammer, known as Tom, or I should say Tom, known as Sand Rammer, and uh, he said, your sand looks a little dry, so I took the liberty of adding more oil and mulling it, and it seems to pack better, and I, I think it's successful. I may not be able to go with the, the big risers, as Tom suggested, because the risers now are going to enter here in this thin spot, which would reduce or eliminate their effectiveness. It needs to go into the thicker portion, but you'll see that when we get out there. So I might do it several ways, I might not, but the goal is to end up with a 90 percenter like this. And this one looks good, and you might have recalled me showing that in the last one, but ton 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 ton. Remember, that's the one where the sand filled in, and I went ahead and cast it anyway. And this would be a usable one, it just requires a lot more machining. Sorry about that. That was quite a filibuster, wasn't it? I ought to run for Congress and do nothing up on the hill, just as our illustrious uh, elected officials do. Well, this is the mold that I made yesterday, and again, this is the 10 by 12 flask. Much lighter in weight and easier to handle. And look at how nice that part withdrew from this pattern. And it pulled right out. I was extremely pleased with that. Let's take a look at the other half. Here's the other half. Got the gate in it. Uh, the risers, the sprue of course in the other one. And uh, I blew that out real good. I think it's going to pour alright. So what I have to do now, and it's a nice day outside, is go ahead and hook up the furnace and pour this. So 
that's all you're going to see for now until the, the liquid metal. And if this is successful, I may not go back and show the molding of this because it really serves no purpose. You've seen me make so many, many sand molds and I think it's probably become old hat and relatively boring to you. So I'm not going to show that. Here we go. See you in about 45 minutes. Here we go. It's been well over an hour ago that I poured this. It's still a little too hot to touch, but it's safe to break it open. Let's see what happened here. I think it's a good one. I think it's a good one. I don't see any of that fallout that I had in the other ones and I think most of that's due to the fact that I mulled the sand and added oil, this 30 weight non-detergent, a liberal amount, and the fact that I could handle the flasks. This is slightly smaller. I don't see any shrinkage here, do you? Do you? So I think we'll take it downstairs and cut the, the gates off and give it another once over and that might be all there is to this video. But did you notice that I used uh, pretty much the same, not pretty much, I, I did the same thing that Tom told me to do with the sprue down here and then the gates going both ways and then the risers. Also did you notice that I added just a little bit more molten aluminum to the or the risers. Whether or not that did anything I don't I do not know. Also it's very important on a thick casting like this to pour it as cool as possible. And it was right about in the 1250 range according to my fire meter. Okay. The subject of upcoming videos is uh, regarding cutting speeds on the bandsaw. So I'm going to use the wood cutting bandsaw to cut aluminum. It's at uh, 2,900 feet per minute. It's a skip tooth blade that is about shot anyway. So uh, before I go into those other videos, I thought I'd just uh, use this for cutting off the gate. See what happens. I have redeemed myself because this really turned out well for a change and I as I said I, I was ashamed of this one and pretty much that whole last video but I learned a lot and you probably did too or at least I hope you did so what were the keys to success here again properly prepared and mulled uh, sand uh, refinished with greater fillets and uh, smoothness down here in the deep spot poured at a cool temperature and I used smaller flasks that I was able in my weakened condition to handle. So there it is, a finished casting, 
few little blemishes there that could matter less. That I think is sand that wasn't maybe packed tight enough, but that's all going to be milled, so it doesn't matter. And I think Tom would have preferred if I had made the the gates here much larger, but it turned out all right, so that's fine. Okay, that really concludes this video, and I'm not going to carry it any farther than there. There's the uh, the pattern for that, and I hope that I have a yeah. That's that's the correct jaw. So I have a jaw and a body that possibly later this winter, if I get winter, if I get around to it, I will indeed uh, machine it into a, a finished Peterson Products vice. Remember, this was all about. Peterson Products Revisited. All right, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, this was 447 and a half, one that I snuck in between the other ones. So make sure you watch the video on either side of this. This is Tubal Cain saying, so long for now, and I'll see you, I hope, in uh, my further adventures in the machine shop.